I'm Stan Copeland, pastor of Lovers Lane United Methodist Church in Dallas, Texas. Recently, my friend and colleague Mike Lowry did the right thing, and I greatly respect his decision. He retired a few months ago and announced his work in retirement as a United Methodist bishop to continue to help organize and launch, as part of the transition team, the Global Methodist Church. Bishop Cynthia Fierro Harvey, who chairs the Council of Bishops of the United Methodist Church, wrote a gracious but pointed letter that was the right thing to do. She said to her colleague, Bishop Mike Lowry, I trust that you understand that you will be required to surrender your United Methodist clergy credentials as there is no disciplinary provision authorizing an ordained United Methodist minister to hold membership simultaneously in another denomination. Upon joining another denomination, membership in the United Methodist Church is terminated. This was upheld by the Judicial Council in Decision 696. In the case of bishops, you will also be expected to resign from the Episcopal office in accordance with paragraph 408.4 of the Book of Discipline of the United Methodist Church 2016. She closes the letter. In these times of transition, our prayer is that we might bless and send each other into new forms of Methodism in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is an act that saddens me because we have shared mutual respect and we're in a small group together, Mike Lowry and I. Together for some years we shared in this group and theologically I've resonated with Mike, his more traditional beliefs. But regarding inclusion of LGBTQ persons in the church, we are not of the same mind and conviction. I strongly supported Mike's election as bishop and remember that he was quite vocal about wanting to be a bishop and speaking to his gifts, being so suited for the office. I liked that straightforwardness. Though some would say it was not a very smart political position, I prefer truth and laying it on the line to fake and hemming and hawing. And it worked for him. He was elected. And Mike has always been transparent and doesn't him and haw. He got my vote and still has my respect. He gets my full vote of confidence today in making the choice to surrender his United Methodist credentials. I dare say other active and retired United Methodist bishops have been just as involved and some apparently by their own admission have been more involved in helping form the GMC and even assisting in writing their law book. Some claim even-handedness in assessing progressive churches as well, but I'd be highly suspicious of such a claim. It would be a move of integrity on the part of a few United Methodist bishops, active and retired, to follow Mike Lowry's lead and surrender their credentials and move on, and not use power and influence to further divide the United Methodist Church. This would allow us to elect new bishops who are strong visionary clergy, women and men of highest integrity, who love the church, and want to serve the office of bishop. Uh, we need them now more than ever. It is my understanding from reading the GMC law book that has much more restrictive and punitive measures regarding LGBTQ inclusion. Their view of bishops is different too. A bishop serves a term and is limited to that term. Bishops are not bishops for life. Therefore, I guess it is right for me to refer to Bishop Lowry as Mike, for it is my understanding that though he could be given clergy status and be a GMC retired clergy, unless he is somehow grandfathered in as a bishop, he no longer has that office in retirement or otherwise, for bishops are not bishops for life. To refer to Mike as Bishop Lowry, is to refer to him in his previous ecclesiastical role as a United Methodist. 
I'm thankful for our Bishop Mike McKee in the North Texas Conference for his steady hand and strong leadership. He said to all of us, lay and clergy, in a series of meetings that he held, he said, I want you to stay in the United Methodist Church. We need you. We need our traditional and progressive churches, our centrist churches, our rural and urban churches, all working together to be the church that we are called to be in our respective mission fields. You know, as I said earlier, bishops do make a difference in maintaining order and unity in how they lead. I heard Bishop Fierro Harvey say in a series of sermons, I do not want a United Methodist Church that is so inclusive that it becomes exclusive. Both bishops are making the same point. From the power of their office, they're saying, we need one another. We need unity in essentials, tolerance in our non-essentials, and in all things, we need to love one another. We need a church strongly committed to our mission and known for what and who we are for, not who and what we are against. We'll keep these videos coming. Thanks for subscribing to the Pickland Parson YouTube page and sharing these videos with friends who may be looking for straightforward information. Thanks again for watching.